And we're back for the love of the game. Yours truly, Andrew Spencer. TJ Edwards. Oh, a lot to uncover. Love mm. that word. Um, first off, let's talk about the Bears mm. are one game out from the playoffs. Yes, sir. Elaborate. Yeah, man, it's been a uh, it's been a wild journey, no yeah. doubt. Um, definitely didn't start how we wanted to, but um, I feel like we're we're picking up steam right now, you know. And um, shoot, anything can happen, no doubt. Dude, I think it is the coolest thing because I sat here in this chair next to you when it was zero and four or two in whatever the case may be. You yeah. kept saying we're so close, mm -hmm. we're so close to hitting it, and, and like I was talking about how. I didn't feel like there was a camaraderie or chemistry in there. And it's like, now you guys are inseparable looking on the field. You see Brisker going nuts in the media for, for Justin Fields. You see just the reactions when on that, on that play where he slid and, and got hit, you see mm -hmm. Cole Komet, you see um, DJ Moore, everyone just visibly upset at the fact that their quarterback and you guys are riding with this guy, man. And I, and, I, and you could see the confidence starting to elevate him a little bit in, in his play. So just talk about a little bit more about how, um, you know, just the, the camaraderie has helped Justin Fields. You guys have confidence in him as well. Yeah. I mean, going back to what you first said, like I remember when we were sitting here, we we're like doing movie quotes or whatever. And it's like talking about all the, all the tough things that are going on. Um, yeah, man, but I, I truly think there's something special in that in that locker room. No right. Doubt. And um, I think I think Jay Fields is, is different. I really do. Like, right. Just in terms of what I like saw from OTAs and camp. And um, so I knew that this time was, was coming. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's all of us kind of just believing that, believing in one another and, um, you know, good things are happening. So it's it's definitely coming to fruition a little bit. Dude's still getting hit and there's no flag whatsoever. Right. right. I think one of the, also the things that I love, and I don't think you see many GMs or is is Poles the president or GM? GM. GM. Yeah. You don't see GMs as involved. I don't know why, but every time post game, you see Poles running up and giving guys hugs. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, that's it. Starts at the top. No, no. Doubt. You know what I mean? No, and then, no. and then you, you hear you hear meetings with Ebert Flus where he's like, I love you guys. Yeah. I mean, like. Say what you want about Ebert Flus, whatever. This guy cares about this team and he cares about the direction that you guys are heading in. Uh, never once did you guys just pack it in. Um, and I honestly, like, regardless of how the season ends, I, I I will take the season as a success. No one knew where it was going. I think you guys put in some character guys, um, like Sweat and and just a, a dog as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I think nice. this was, uh, you know. I hate to, you know, say this, but the podcast definitely had to do something with. I, I, I swear these these rom com things. It really was like, you know what, motherfucker, it turned it around, and, and you started positive rom com. It, it was some positive in there, so I think it's good. No, um, it is good, and um, I will say the one thing about Flus is he has not like changed. So whether we win or lose, like. Um, and that's one thing you can respect and trust me. Like the the GM thing is cool, um, but trust me, there's a couple of tough walks to the locker room early on where you're not getting as many handshakes as you walk into the <laughs> locker room. Um, so it definitely feels good when everyone's you know what I'm saying like riled up after a win, and um, that's the feeling that you play the game for. That's what you work so hard for. So um, we're just gonna keep going, man, and, and keep building on these past couple past couple weeks and, and see what happens. All right, well, I'm just going to – I know you hate this, but we're going to give you a little shout-out. We're going to talk about you a little bit. Obviously, Pro Bowl within was in the front uh, mirror here. <laughs> Fuck, not front mirror. Pro Bowl is yeah. some something that's attainable right now. Um, three takeaways in the last three weeks uh, that you guys have played. Um, you're on a little bit of a hot streak. Um, is there anything to contribute to that, or are you just, you know, just finding the ball? And uh, I mean – Shoot, you know, as linebacker, like, your job is to be around the ball. Mm -hmm. And some of those, you just basically call it, like, living right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the one last week, like, they fumbled a snap, and normally someone gets on it right away. Um, but out of nowhere, our nose tackle just, like, kind of, like, kicks the ball just a little bit. And I was like, ain't no way this thing is still on the ground. <laughs> From the um, ski. Yeah, yeah, so I got on it, and I was I was apologizing. He's got it covered up tighter than a pickle jar. <laughs> <laughs> Put on that back, No, but it was, uh... It was like on our nose tackle, like foot. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I I'm sorry. I had to grab his foot 
and the ball at the same time. So I'm squeezing both. You got some battle wounds underneath there. Yeah, Talk, well, what's scratch. it like in the dog pile? I, got a scratch. I don't even know. I wear a visor, so I don't even know how I got a scratch on my face and everything. Um, you know, I've, I've heard some rumors that it gets pretty rowdy down there. Like when there's a fumble, guys, you know, putting fingers where they shouldn't be, eye gouging sometimes. And have you, obviously, you've experienced a little bit from this game, but. Not that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, have you has any have you have any guys stories about like this um, guy grabbed my nuts and fucking yeah no I've seen pause I mean, I've definitely seen that <laughs> big time but pause. yeah I've definitely seen some wild stuff like you you see like fingers getting pulled back like you see like just like dudes just trying to do anything to get their hand off the ball um, but I had I had this last game like I had the ball in the line center like he had the ball too and I just remember thinking like I can't let go of this. Ball. <laughs> And like it, I swear, it was like it felt like ten minutes. So I was down yeah. there, and I was just like, I was just like, though, at the end, I was like, bro, just let go. Like it's over. Like mm-hmm. I got it. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm trying. I can't get up. I can't. I can't. I'm like, just let go. He's like, I can't. I was like, why well, am I letting go? I don't know what we're gonna do right here. Um, but no, nah, it, it does uh, get crazy. I tell you what, though, anyone, if I feel anyone like touch me or something, I had the ball. I'm done. Mm-hmm. You, got <laughs> you got it, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh man, that's freaking great, nah, dude. Okay. Um, it's you yeah. guys become a turnover machine. Um, well, can you give us some statistics, uh, Justin, on Chicago Bears defensive rankings right now with turnovers and et cetera? It's definitely ticked up these past. Like, oh, my God. Jalen Johnson, bro. man. He's cold, bro. Dude, I'm finds the ball. Fine. You, you called that, too. Yeah, I think I've people need to start listening to this podcast because this guy's been – Hot takes on here. You've been, you've been spot on about the direction, you know, the team has been going and just pretty much everything. It, it's – I think you have a very well – a very good sense of, you know, a winning environment or, you know, yeah. how things are going. And it's very realistic. You're not going to sugarcoat and yeah. you're not going to, you know – and falsify like, information. And so. it's like you've, you know, you guys have been in locker rooms before that you can feel if a team is kind of like splitting apart or mm-hmm. if it's like coming together. Um, it's been one of those where we've been just coming together. You know right. what I'm saying? Like it, it's especially in this business. You know what I'm saying? It's very easy for people to just go out there and say they want to get theirs and whatever happens with win or losses. But no one, no one on our team is like that, and that's that's pretty rare, no doubt. But Chicago Bears honest. fans, you gotta honest. love that. You said what? I did call this though. You did. No, 1,000%. I remember the speech. The motherfucker almost had me run through the, the glass window over here. Um, JB, any update? Absolutely. Yeah, we got 1,088 rushing yards around this season, which is second. Right Damn, that's not really wild. Okay. Yep. Number two. Which is awesome. Oh. Where are the rankings and turnovers total? 11. Total turnovers. We're in 11th? 11th. Not bad. 11 out of 32. So, I mean, we got 20, the top is 24. So you're four. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. Oh, so you're fourth. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Hey, that's good. That's good. Um Iberflus taking over, obviously on defense looks like a like a really good move. Um so yeah. Wanna see that continue between you guys. I hope uh you know, hope your body's all right. Everyone's good mentally. Yep. Heading into the next week. We are having fun watching. I will yeah, say. Yeah, man, it's been uh it's been a heck of a heck of a ride so far, you know. But and and one of the words, football. one of the words I keep hearing is keep stacking. Mm. And you said it first, and now it's on it's on the Instagram of Chicago Bears. It's a it's a great term to use right now. And I think, and I sent you a text. I said keep stacking yeah. before. I, I loved it. So that's 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 the mood right now. Keep yeah, stacking. Next, uh, Instagram caption gone. <laughs> I forgot something. Else. <laughs> Was that the way you were pick? <laughs> <laughs> it's still good, bro. Hey, <laughs> you get a tagline going. With that being said, For the Love of the Game now has merch. <laughs> Keep stacking shirts. <laughs> Moving on. You know, let's touch into a little bit of the love side. You know, one of the things I was asked one time on uh, Instagram Live when I was with Becca, they were asking, what What do you think Andrew's red flag is? And, and they asked me, like, what do you think your red flags are? And I was like, I don't have any. Well, I come to tell you right now, I think I found it. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it, I do it purposely. It, it does happen, but I am a terrible listener. Yeah. 
could have told you that a long, long time. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I feel yeah. bad. Yeah. I yeah. I know. And it's, I, I, I feel like I need to work on that. I think it's been a, a reoccurring thing with a lot of my relationships where I just blank. And they're like, you didn't even know what I just said. And I was like, I really don't. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I feel bad about it. Like, it's not my, it's not me doing it intentionally. Um, I just, I don't even be thinking about anything. I'll just space out sometimes while they're going through like a story. Yeah. I mean, the problem is when you're talking so much, it's hard to listen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I have a podcast. So people can listen to me talk. <laughs> Do you hear anybody calling in? <laughs> No, nah, it's a it's a very you know underrated thing though. Yeah, I mean it's a little self awareness. You know, sometimes yeah. you gotta you gotta find that in yourself to be self aware and and try to better yourself. And I think that's one of the things. I don't know if it's a New Year's resolution or not, mm. but it uh, I'm definitely gonna work on that. I think that's the biggest thing for me. DJ, what are your red flags? I got. I feel like I got a bunch. <laughs> okay, give me one. I, I guess it's kind of similar to yours, but I feel like once I'm, like once I'm like tired for the for the night or tired for the day, mm -hmm. like there's just really not much that's gonna stop me from just turning on the TV and just blanking out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like you know, yeah. like, all right, my day's done. You I'm just shut down. Out. I'm yeah. just shutting down. Yeah, the computer. You know yeah, no, and, and I could see how that might not be fair to the people around you. Oh, and, one thousand percent. Um. It's tough to break red flags and it's it's tough to break certain things of that nature where you you know you've been so comfortable in doing that for yeah. so long. Um it's good and, that you're aware though. No, and that's and that's all I'm trying to do right now is tell the fellas I'm like guys man be aware. Yeah. Be a little bit self aware, do a little check on yourself and yeah. things that you might think um you aren't doing well in and you ask about them. Be yeah. like, "Hey, am I good at this?" and they'll be like, "Hell no." Or they'll it's tell you right away. Back. Yep. Yeah, you gotta get feedback. Um, and JB, then just, what's your red flag? Yeah. I gotta know. Yeah, I, I'd say struggling with boundaries, like saying yes too much. Yeah, you are mm -hmm. definitely a yes man. I, I'm similar to that. Older. Yeah, I'm a people pleaser as well. Yeah, people pleaser is what yeah. I wanted. Yeah. I thought I don't know what JB was gonna say. You know, sing too well in the shower, so <laughs> something dumb. Really? Yeah. I was only had one, but. <laughs> That's weird. Self aware. <laughs> that's me. No, obviously we all have plenty of red flags, but that's just the one I I really was like I am terrible at. What's a red flag that would send you? Yeah, yeah. that that would get me annoyed. Um. Well, the list goes on. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. How, how they talk. Yeah, tone, 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 tone. tone. Okay. Oh my God. You know, I get it. I get that, you know, we do some bad things, but we can't, in hypocrisy, we can't do half the things that they can do. Um, when they do things, we, we have grace. Like, we, we always, our tone can't be, yeah, why are okay. you yelling at me? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, no, well, I just didn't like what you did that. Yeah. If they didn't like something that we did, oh. it's over. It's over. So I would say if someone has bad tone, I think that's the, the biggest red flag that okay. um, the person of the opposite sex could have because that just like that ruins so much in a relationship and it just deep down cuts harder than, you know, you could say whatever you want, but it's how you say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, JB, I fucking hate you. But it's like, well, you didn't scream it. <laughs> At least we're able to have a conversation. About yeah, it. you know what I mean? I feel like I could talk to you still. Yeah, if if you nice. talk to me, like, talk to me, don't talk at me. Yeah. yeah and that's, I mean, that's a that's a huge, that's an every person thing, but mostly in opposite sex now, I feel like we've gotten so far into treating women so well and wanting to do everything we can that I feel like they're taking advantage of it sometimes. And I'm just like, dude, guys, listen. Yeah. Like, I don't want to treat you badly, but why you gotta? Why you gotta? Don't pull a o. Take a mile. A o. Take a mile. You know, you give an inch to take a mile. Yeah. So it, I, it is an interesting uh, topic. You yeah. Know, um, I feel like Kelly and I have been together for so long that um, we, we know each other's red flags kind of inside and out, and we've we've been able to have, 
you know, good good feedback off those. Right. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think tone is big. Listening is big for both sides. Right. Um, I mean, shoot, for me, it's been... I mean, and everyone wants to say, like, social media, like, doing certain things is a red flag. I I hate yeah. social media when it comes to Bro, you post one relationship. I have oh, to. Man. It's my job. Um, but relationships and, and, and social media, has it's just, you can't, you can't do hand You can't do both. Yeah. I also um, think in social media in terms of, like, relationships, like, you can't win. In you can't win. Instance. In any instance, um, you know, you can't have... You can't be following people. Yeah, especially like you, like where your life. Is Even so if like some of those people were someone that I met, like um, mutual friends, and yeah. we'd like it's a it's a networking thing. Not every not every you can't I can't tell how whatever what they're gonna post. I don't know what yeah. they're gonna post. Now they're half naked. I didn't follow them because they were half naked. You know, but they are half naked, and what do you want me to do? I, 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 I unfollow them. Okay, now I lost network. You know what I mean? Like, and now someone's now if I see them out where I um I'm casually out, they're gonna be like, "Why'd you unfollow me?" Yeah. Now I gotta go through the, and then you're mad at me because I said, "Oh, well, my girlfriend wanted me to unfollow you." Yeah, I think it's like that's what interests me about like you guys and your kind of platform in terms of like the dating thing, right? I mean, I, like for me, like I, I play football, and I think people want to see my social media because I play football and mm -hmm. like things like that. But like for you, and like your your whole crew of guys that are over there, like the relationship in terms of like who you're dating and like all the people that have been following you because they're in your they want to see your life. Yeah, yeah. like it, that whole thing is wild. To me. It's hard. Like, it's I don't tough. Know if I can do it, man. Yeah, you know it, it's and obviously when you go through dating, um, you're gonna be dating people sometimes. And everyone just expects you to get married yeah. off the jump. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, well, why do I have to only post people that I know I'm going to marry? Or yeah. like they've turned it into like a, a job, not a job, um, like like my background record. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? They keep tabs on all my all the things I've posted and who I've posted I with. Like 30 now, so they're probably wondering. This guy gonna get married. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, I, I want to get married too, man. Like, trust me, I'm not like, I'm not like not wanting to. Uh, and it's it's obviously right now there's a lot of babies being made. Yeah, a lot of um, friends. I would love to have a kid sooner rather than later. No, I definitely. But obviously, there's no pressure. No, I'm not telling someone. You know, <laughs> pop me out, baby. Moving on. Um. We just watched a fair share of movies that, you know, may come true, may not come true. Um, but it's got us talking, right, JB? One of the movies, starting with the first one, I think is the reason why we ended up at the second movie. You know, there was a correlation, did you? Watch what I do. Um, so the movie, Leave Everything Behind, freaking out. Uh, it's about a cyber attack, hackers hacking America. Deaf to America, they say. Um, you know, it could possibly happen. It's it's produced by the the Obamas. Uh, everyone, by the Obamas. By the Obamas. So a former president Obama. produced this. All right, I'm out automatically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and like at the end of the day, like I always been a firm believer that movies do tell you slight truths. Mm. You you can't take movies all for fake because that's that's a I think they're just subliminal messages in there all the time. Okay. This is definitely possible because today or yesterday, China tried to hack United States the other day and get into their power grids, which is nuts. I, we thought it was fake, but it is in fact true. Uh, so your sources, uh, Fox. Well, we'll yeah, we'll, not the best. All right, we'll, we'll 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 send a Carfax. Uh, which is nuts. But anyways, getting into the movie. The movie is happening. There's a huge blackout across the world. And next thing you know, if everyone uses their phone for everything. Your GPS, uh, your car is has you know technology as well. Yeah, um, shut down. So everything, yeah, no. Everything shuts down. They take control. They hack everything. Power so grid's off. Baby. And at that moment, we get sent into a frenzy of civil war. Because your phones are down. People were fighting and trying to get supplies and what's going on. I think the, you, you've seen COVID. Yeah. We've already experienced a little bit of how it would work. People need toilet paper. Everyone needs toilet paper. Um, 
Mm-hmm. But then that's just like the first part of it. Mm-hmm. And but then once your systems are down and planes start crashing because they don't have any tech, sure? not bro. Nose diving, nose diving. There's freaking no, the out. boats that have all our nukes on them are just washing up shore because they get they're getting controlled electronically. It sounds wild. And it's then wild they bad. just and then at the, the 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 kicker, they just start dropping bombs on us. Who who is they? The rest of the world. Uh, yeah. Fucking crazy correlation. No, that is uh, that is crazy. Uh, they're so, saying it's like the cheapest way to hack a country. Because that was like the guy, he sold defense stuff. And mm-hmm. it was, you take out the grid, you don't even use any of your own supplies. They start a civil war because they're the most dysfunctional country, the USA. And then third, it was like the activists who thought they were saving the world ended up killing us. It, it, it was like our own nukes against ourselves. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to watch that tonight. I'm yeah. Watch that tonight. Here's the thing about movies and those type things. I, I like that they... Not like, but like, I understand that they get you like thinking about, oh, that like this could happen. But what was the one movie? Uh, 2012. You remember that? Mm hmm. When the world was going to end at like a certain day and everyone, mm-hmm. everyone was watching that movie and was like, this is about to happen. Right. This is about to go down. <laughs> this is about to happen. Like, we need to start planning. Right. Exactly. That's, that doesn't happen. But that's, that's what it is, though. That, that key word you said, we need to start planning. That's all it is. It doesn't, it doesn't say it's going to happen on that day. It's telling you that at some point this could could happen. And if you ain't planned and prepared for it, then that's what this movie does. It's just, it's, it's just like a warning. Like, hey, this could happen. How are you going to react? Are we going to fight each other? Or can we just stay civil and be able to work it out and, and see if we can survive it? Because once we start fighting each other in the inner cities, and the cities are they're probably going to go down first because there's just so much difference there. Yeah. Um, I promise you right now, I'm taking both of you yeah. Wait, we're coming here, bro. TJ has a bunker in his house. Um, don't worry, I'll buy hazmat suits. I'm gonna do my part. Carlo is guarding the door. <laughs> Everybody's getting in. Perfect. <laughs> Come on, Harlow. Um, yeah. No, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll bring JB. Will bring the waters. Uh, I got the hazmat suit. We'll be here. We'll Tesla car over here. Who else is controlling that thing? I I am riding a bike. <laughs> I'm, I'm t- that's the one thing I, I'm gonna have to go purchase a bike. Yeah, yeah. who's who's in your bunker? Who's in my? If you had to choose to How be in your bunker, hmm? How many people are gonna have? You get fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen in the bunker. Whose house is this? It's a big old bunker. You think you you can't fit fifteen in this house? A bunker is a smaller portion of the house. No, or it's um, just in the basement. I mean, immediate family. So I guess I'd have to do people in proximity, right? Yep. Um, just because. Parents are in a different place. Brothers in a different place. Sisters in a different place. So how would that fare with your wife? What if your wife is like, I want to go up north to honestly, the wife is bunker? Honestly, going up north maybe might, might not be the worst idea. So you would lend the house to us? No. Okay. False. <laughs> False. <laughs> False. Well, we're going to break in anyways. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to bunk. I mean, I'd have my wife and my dog. So that's two. Harlow takes up two seats. You're going you're gonna to put your dog over me? That's some bullshit. Have you seen I Am Legend, bro? <laughs> you need dog. Have you seen I Am well Legend, bro? I need my dog. Oh, dead. Um, Kelly kind of just snuck in there. Harlow's taking them two <laughs> <laughs> you know, So I got Kelly, Harlow, for mm-hmm. sure. I got my family. Um, honestly, we're probably good with that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hard question, but you know, I I think I'd be pretty receptive to letting a lot of people yeah, in. Yeah, me too. Um, whoever I could help, I yeah. think that would, and I think you need more of that uh, in this world. I mean, like at the end of the day, like it's a survival of freaking humanity, um, and that's what I would care for more. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Which brings me to my point: The Hunger Games, another movie we just saw. Crazy, crazy movie, dude. Like, imagine like losing a war, and the war is like, all right, well, we're gonna turn all you guys into a bloodbath. You have to fight f- for your life, pretty much. You've seen Hunger Games. What district would you be in? No, yeah, I don't know him that well. I, Kelly knows him well. I, I you, you're know. definitely a second district, first district guy. Masonry. Yeah. It sounds like an insult. <laughs> But I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm you're a little, you're a little silver spoonish. Like, <laughs> you're definitely in the. Yeah, you're definitely number two. 
Definitely District Two. What she say in the uh, in the movie? Where she's like, uh, she like takes someone's spot. She's like, I volunteer. Mm, I volunteer as tribute. That be me. Cap. That be me, bro. Absolute lie. Are you kidding me? No well, way you're going in. Yeah, but if they're gonna send some like person who maybe can't fight for themselves, or I gotta stand up for my district. Okay, so like if it's you and Kelly, Kelly gets asked to go. <laughs> I, I volunteer. I volunteer. One, one. Okay, here's where. Okay, I, what if it was me, bro? Where, would you volunteer for me? No, I would take care of the people of your people. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be fine, bro. You'd be fine. I will say, I think Kelly. Are would be you? Fine, are I'm you fine. coming to the tree? <laughs> I'm telling you, Kelly in the wild, she knows what's going on. I don't. So we'd have to talk about it as a family. What we want to do. Okay. Well, it's just like a it's just like a map. Like you have to survive and like you have to kill people. Yeah. Well, I don't think Kelly's killing. Uh, I wouldn't want her to see that. I wouldn't want her to see that. I'd have to do it as the man of the house. But okay. if it was between me and you, I think I'd do better than you. I don't think so, bro. I, I think I would definitely. I would do way better than you. I would do better better than both of you guys. Put me in. Well, okay. Hey, are we talking bro. the original <clears throat> map or the? The Katniss, the Katniss, the Katniss one I know. That's with what's her name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know that one. Yeah, that, that so that one's game. like a tech map. Like it's just got a bunch of different resources. They throw some like stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the the old one was just like thug it out. Yeah. yeah, I would rather go into that one. Yeah, me too. Because the whole. But like, at the same the time, like. In the, in the new well, they had to kill the black dude off. There's no way anyone was killing that guy. Like, let's be real. That dude was a beast. <laughs> he said, "You lucky I didn't kill you, Faru." Teamed up with him. Yeah, one thousand percent. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, we can both get out of here together. <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat some fruits? <laughs> yeah, bro. I, I think uh, I think JB might do well. I don't, he's not a, he's not like a killer. Though. What would you, what would your specialty be? I'd be District Three, the Technology District. <laughs> Bro shooting arrows into the into the biodome. I would know the infrastructure and how to take it down. That's, That's pretty good. Yeah, you're a thinker for sure. I would definitely brute force battle that. I would be hard to kill someone. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, dude, that sucks. I would fucking I it, slaughter I think you them. Say what you want. I think that'd be difficult for just about anybody. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. See me. See me in the what is it? Uh, see me in the jungle fighting a bear. Help the bear. Help the bear. <laughs> Help the bear. Help you, bro. Yeah, that's tough. I don't. I you know. That's if that's if the worlds are already just in a dark spot, man. I think yeah, if it's in a dark a spot, spot, like you're already fighting for your life. Um, I think it hits at a core of humanity of like we are all an environmental. Yeah, like right now, our morals would never kill because we're like, things are well, and that goes back to leave, don't leave, or leave everything behind because things are going well. But when shit hits the fan, man, like it's it's flight or flight. That freaking natural animal instinct kicks in in the body, and I feel like if I'm in that that dome, man. So what district are you? In? Yeah, what district are you? Wait, I'm, hold on. What is district two that I just got thrown into? No, nah, it's like a, it's like an upper echelon no. district. It's like a it's a it's not the capital, but it's like right outside the capital. Say, I know I'm not the capital. No, 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 no. You're not the capital. Yeah, don't put me with. No, 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 no. You're not the capital. I might be in the capital. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> No, I, I feel like I'm a former victor already. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, um, basking in the ambiance of the great capital stuff, and then I get thrown back in, you know, for quarter quell. Um, but, no, I, I think I would be 11. That was where the black people were. Or 12. I'm calling big cat. I what? think you would struggle. I don't think I, I would struggle, you, bro. I know you personally, and I know you struggle. Nah, man. I think I'd be good. I've seen some shit in my life. <laughs> you know what they say? Not a great listener. <laughs> <laughs> and then it brings me to my last show, Squid Games. Have you seen Squid Games? The reality TV. Yeah. I, I watched like the first couple of episodes. I never even finished the Fire. first like Squid Games. So like all the games to me were new when I was yeah. watching reality. And, and that's way better for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's so much better. Um, no, that was That was cool. You know, I just don't get how people were being so buddy buddy. Um, I went in the beginning because there's a lot, and you need team in the beginning. Towards the end, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. 
trying to win some bread here. Yeah, right, if I'm if I'm bottom ten, you can forget about being my teammate. <laughs> I saw um, recently that the winner. I don't even know who won, but the winner still didn't even receive her money yet. No, her no. Money, Last segment of the day, we're gonna correlate rom coms to where the Bears are right now. First, what happens in Vegas? Can I get a little uh, explanation? Oh yeah. Well, this is a good movie where they accidentally ended up in Vegas and won a ring. I would correlate to the season that we're at because you guys are one game out. The Super Bowl is in Vegas. Maybe you accidentally won a Super Bowl ring this year. Definitely wouldn't be by accident. Be by uh, honestly from the start of this podcast. You know how I feel. (laughs) Okay, Um, next one is couples retreat. Great movie. I feel Great like movie. you guys were married in the beginning. Obviously, you're married. You had some little problems that you guys never really found out. You found out what those problems were. Now you guys are living life in paradise and enjoying the fruits of yeah of where you are right now. But you guys had to go through some hard trials and tribulations, like falling out of the raft. You know, like when he was uh, going through the jungle too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had to play the mm-hmm. guitar hero scene. Yep. yep. And you guys found your way. That's a good one. It's a good yeah, one. That's a good one. Don't okay. It. That awkward moment. Mm. This is more about the fan base. And the fan base thinking this team was terrible. Yep. Cheating on this team. Yep. Um, and then breaking a friendship with you guys. You know, and now it's awkward because. We love you now. You know, everyone was talking crap about Fields. We're talk. We're calling for Bajent. They're calling for Eberflus's head, Poles' head, and now all of a sudden, this is the greatest team ever assembled. So that is the awkward moment. Yeah, that's that's Chicago media for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I have a little bias just because out of all those movies, it's the only one that I actually know and. I think you're able to correlate it well, but I'm gonna go with couples retreat. Gotcha. I feel like we're like we fell off the raft already, mm-hmm. but we're still not in the in the paradise part yet. But we're like on our way. We're getting there. Love so that couples great retreat. freaking movie. Go it's check that out. Couples retreat. It'll make oh. you laugh your ass off. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's podcast for the love or the game. I'm Andrew Spencer. T.J. Edwards. Good night, sunny Chicago. <laughs> You wintry Chicago.